Let's be frank with ourselves. Life is getting more hectic and demanding all the time, and we aren't getting younger. It seems that there's only one way to cope. Multitasking. A stupidly high amount of individuals all over the internet, known as gurus, life hackers, and clowns are trying to convince you of that very fact. The idea behind it is that it increases the productivity and the efficiency of the individual. Even though thousands of unofficial and unqualified people support the idea, similar to flat earthers or moon truthers, it's still just a theory with no major study behind it. Ironically, the whole concept can be compared to juggling balls. Juggling one ball is relatively easy and simple for your brain to focus on. Two balls split your brain's focus, making one have more mistakes. And three or more balls is chaotic and it's going to be a mess no matter how good one is initially. Now to truly debunk the false idea of multitasking, let's start off with one ball and talk about what is multitasking and what happens within the brain. Secondly, let's add our second ball and discuss how multitasking affects us in our daily basis. And lastly, as we add our third ball and as it becomes way too chaotic, let's discuss the major impacts of multitasking. Now then, as we throw our very first ball up into the air, let's ask the question, what is multitasking? According to Professor Eva Tarusta, the term was first used in the 1960s uh, to describe computer performance. The human brain, however, is not a computer, and the definition changed with it over time. Today, multitasking is defined as the ability to do multiple things simultaneously by Cambridge Dictionary, and is typically used to describe human beings. Moreover, unlike a computer, human intention is very limited. According to the APA, or American Psychological Association, visual attention is modeled like a flashlight. It can only be shown in one direction at any given moment. Our primary focus, and what we're paying most attention to, is like the brightly lit center of that flashlight. Moreover, it can also be visualized like a camera lens. One can choose to narrow in their focus to concentrate on details, or narrow out to be aware of multiple things simultaneously. But it is physically impossible to narrow in and out at the same time. Even though in this context, multitasking should be impossible, our brain for some reason still encourages this action. Nicholas Carr states, our brain itself encourages the action of multitasking because it craves information. Even though in practicality, it's not that good at processing data at the speed and intensity we find ourselves today. This is partially due to the fact that our working memory has a very small capacity. Working memory essentially is the context of one's consciousness at any given moment. What you're aware of right now is part of your working memory. What you're not aware of is not part of your working memory. The whole concept can be compared in, in the 1950s book, The Magical Number 7. In the book, the author states that one's working memory can only hold seven pieces of information at any given moment whether that be a seven digit number or the names of seven different people. When people exceed this number, something happens where information is entering and exiting their brain at the exact same time. This phenomenon causes quite literally cognitive overload. In this state, one can't truly focus on anything because their brain doesn't have the function or capacity to do so. Now that we know why we multitask, Let's move on and talk about how multitasking affects us in our daily lives. According to those gurus that I mentioned earlier, multitasking can be categorized into three different ways that people use it in their daily lives. First is doing two tasks simultaneously. Second is moving back and forth from one path to another. And lastly is doing a number of tasks in rapid succession. Now most people, including you and me, multitasking one of these forms every single day. Professor McFun Atkins states that most people multitask in their daily lives because they want to be more productive and FOMO. Wait, what's FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. People fear and missing out in tweets, Instagram notifications, and text messages. FOMO is also the reason why most people check their Instagram feed while they're on the toilet 
or watch cute cat videos while they're in college lectures. Because of FOMO, we are constantly connected through digital distractions that we get through our phones, smartwatches, and laptops. Now this connection isn't inherently a bad thing per se, but it distracts us from all the consequences that come with it. One prime example would be attention span. As multitasking has been on the rise, attention span however has not. Professor Saad Nadim states that the attention span of millennials has dropped to 8 seconds, while the attention span of Gen Z, my generation, has dropped to a measly 2.8 seconds. He states that this drop of attention span is directly correlated into the increase of multitasking that people do through technology or other means. On top of all of this, most people, or most teenagers specifically, spend at least six hours on their phone every day. That's almost a full-time job. Most of the time when they're on their phone, it's usually during school or at work, when FOMO is the strongest and when there's a sharp increase in boredom. Now, I'm not trying to discredit people's way of life. In fact, I spend at least six to seven hours on my phone too. But what I am saying with this paragraph is that when most people multitask to increase their productivity, the exact opposite happens in reality. Now that we near the end of our speech, let's see how multitasking truly can be chaotic. Up until now, we'll be mainly focusing on the more goofy or fun aspects of multitasking. But in reality, it has the potential to kill millions. Multitasking behind your desk or at your computer is fine and has very few harm. But engaging in distractive actions behind the steering wheel not only puts the driver but everyone else on the road at harm. The CDC or Central Disease Center states that 9 people die every day because of inattentive driving. Meanwhile, another 1,000 people sustain an injury because they chose to take their eyes off the road. The most mundane action of listening to music, talking to the passenger, or daydreaming can have a very big impact on the driver. Accidents happen in mere seconds, and a driver is expected to act instantaneously to stop that collision. These car activities that I mentioned undermine this short reaction time. The Central Disease Center states that Roughly 100,000 people sustain an injury from inattentive driving. And 4,000 of those people don't come back alive. On top of this, thousands of more people die because of inattentive accidents related to power tools, skiing, or other forms. People forget to pay attention to their, their dangerous activities and believe in the false idea of multitasking. They believe that they can text and drive at the same time. This delusion of multitasking isn't a problem because it decreases the productivity, but the problem with it is that it distracts the user. Now that we're at the end of our show, we can reflect back and see that juggling was a perfect analogy for multitasking because Juggling one ball is simple. Two balls are relatively hard. And three or more balls is just chaotic. Multitasking as a whole is a parasite. As you just saw, when I try to split my focus on all three balls, I lost. And multitasking splits your brain in the same format, causing one to not truly focus on anything. One needs to remember that multitasking is a parasite that attaches onto the thought process of increasing productivity and stays there until it's too late. Now, I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm not telling you to stop multitasking because it has its ups and downs. What I am saying is next time when you multitask, Pay attention to the context you're in and the consequences that come with the theory of multitasking. Thank you.